Even if you have a favorite fast food burger, you gotta admit, you can go anywhere to get one of those. If you want something different, head to Arby's and pick up a few of their roast beef sandwiches. They're delicious, but here's the thing, they're weird. Here's why. Arby's built its business on roast beef. Don't worry, Mom. I'm eating right. Don't worry, Mom. He's eating right. But the fast food giant has been broadening its horizons in recent years. In 2018, Arby's launched a brand new ad campaign with this slogan. Arby's, we have the meat. For sandwiches. According to the Wall Street Journal, the entire campaign was designed to let people know there's much more to Arby's than roast beef. The campaign features a character referred to as the head of sandwiches, whose whole shtick is wondering why people only associate Arby's with a certain kind of meat. Why do people still think Arby's is just roast beef when we have 17 other sandwiches? Or maybe it was because the last time you went to Arby's, you were with your grandparents, who ate exclusively roast beef every meal. Don't worry, Arby's isn't turning its back on roast beef. The fast food chain just wants to appeal to a younger generation, people who gravitate toward a more diverse array of sandwiches, and not their grandparents' roast beef. You've probably heard this one before. A lot of people believe the name of the fast food chain is a pun on roast beef. RB, Arby's. Get it? Well, you might as well forget it, because it's simply not true. Arby's has tweeted more than once about how it got its name. Uh, we came up with the name Arby's from the initials of our restaurant equipment company, which was Raffle Brothers. That became R period, B period, Arby's. Arby's might be trying to clarify the misconception now, but it was a different story back in the 80s when the company even used an acronym in its advertising slogan. You and I love America's roast beef, yes sir. In 2015, Arby's invested in redesigning its restaurants and kitchens. We have our 10th remodel under construction right now. That's 10 this year year, and we've been so excited about the results. To understand what goes into serving up America's favorite fast food roast beef, Business Insider went behind the scenes in one of the new locations. They discovered that Arby's roast beef is left to marinate in, quote, a roasting bag, and then it's slow roasted for approximately four hours. After that, it's sliced to order for each customer, whether they're standing at the counter or waiting at the drive through Sounds unlikely, right? But this has been confirmed by numerous employees on Reddit, including one former cook and cashier. All of the roast beef is cooked daily and sliced to order just moments before it gets on the sandwich and into your hands. Now that people are paying closer attention to the food they're eating, fast food chains have been under more scrutiny than ever. Take a peek at Arby's nutritional information and you'll find there's a way to eat pretty well and lots of ways to eat not so well. Read up on the classic roast beef and you'll find it's actually not that terrible for you. It's only 360 calories and contains 14 grams of fat, which is pretty good for a fast food sandwich. It also contains about 970 milligrams of sodium, which ain't great, but there are definitely way worse selections out there. The new smoked Italian porchetta. Meat gift wrapped in meat. A present you give to yourself. Don't be fooled into thinking all of Arby's roast beef options are healthy. If you opt for something a little meatier, like the half-pound beef and cheddar, you're looking at 740 calories, 39 grams of fat, and 2,530 milligrams of sodium. To put that in perspective, the American Heart Association claims your daily sodium intake shouldn't be more than 2,300 milligrams, and ideally, it shouldn't be more than 1,500 milligrams. Just one single half-pound beef and cheddar will take you right over the limit. According to Snopes, a particularly disgusting urban legend about Arby's dates back to at least 1997. This long-standing rumor suggests Arby's roast beef is actually imitation meat made from gels, liquids, and pastes that are later shaped into a vaguely meat-like lump and turned into sandwich filler. Arby's. <laughs> Still making sandwiches filled with... <laughs> Filled with sliced something. Fortunately for humanity, Snopes confirms there's absolutely no truth to this story whatsoever. Delightful. Delectable. Delicious. Arby's slogan, We Have the Meats, certainly holds true when looking at their menu. This doesn't mean everything on Arby's menu is a tasty choice, though. We've ranked Arby's most popular items from worst to best, and while some are a hard pass, others are sure to be a treat. 
Even though the corned beef Reuben looks like it'd be a tasty sandwich, don't judge this book by its cover. This Arby's menu item is a disaster. A mushy, messy disaster, to be precise. To make matters even worse, the corned beef Reuben is a complete and utter fraud. A real Reuben sandwich has Russian dressing, while this sandwich has Thousand Island dressing. Moreover, a Reuben sandwich is supposed to have firm bread that is satisfyingly crispy. This abomination has airy, soft bread that is prone to sogginess. Even if you ignore all this, this pile of corned beef, sauerkraut, and Swiss cheese on marble rye just doesn't taste good. From your very first bite, you'll know that you've made a terrible sandwich decision. Arby's Reuben sandwich would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with yours. Get out of here. You're at Arby's, and you decide you want to order something healthy. That's when you point to the chicken club wrap, thinking the nutrition will offset the high price tag. Tragically, you'll be wrong on both accounts. Like the corned beef Reuben, the chicken club wrap has an unappetizing texture. It's too soft and falls apart too easily. Within the wrap, everything is suboptimal. The roasted chicken breast is so dry it's difficult to chew. The pepper bacon is so peppery that the bacon flavor is missing in action. Additionally, there's too much lettuce and not enough cheddar cheese, tomato, or onion. The final cherry on top of this bundle disappointment is the chemical aftertaste of the honey mustard sauce. Oh, and about this wrap being healthy? It's just not. If you manage to choke it all down, you'll have consumed 650 calories, 35 grams of fat, 12 grams of sugar, and 47 total carbs. Just say no to Arby's Chicken Club Wrap. The idea of a cherry turnover from Arby sounds good in theory. The sweetness and the tartness of this turnover will be the perfect addition to your meal, right? Wrong, unfortunately. First of all, the cherry turnover is way too flaky. When you bite into it, this pastry will stick to the roof of your mouth while crumbs rain down onto your clothing. Even worse, there's just not that much cherry filling in it. Plus, the cherry filling that you do find will be overly sweet and won't have any of that satisfying tartness that you expect. The white icing that zigzags along the top of this turnover only adds to the cloying, unbalanced sweetness. A better alternative at Arby's is the apple turnover, because it's less intensely sweet. Better yet, get the salted caramel and chocolate cookie. It features Ghirardelli chocolate and is quite yummy. The jalapeno bites from Arby's is another item that sounds better than it tastes. Somehow, someway, these things are a total letdown. The primary issue with Arby's jalapeno bites is they're simply stuffed with too much cream cheese. But the cheese has more texture than flavor, and this texture can best be described as slimy. Sadly, the spiciness you're craving from these jalapeno bites is nowhere to be found. Maybe Arby's specifically goes with mild-tasting jalapeno peppers, or maybe the cream cheese overwhelms the spice. The good news is that Arby's has a spectacularly good sauce for their jalapeno bites. It's called Bronco Berry Sauce, and it's basically a jelly that is sweet and spicy with a refreshing berry-flavored aftertaste. Don't you dare switch it out for the ranch dipping sauce. Arby's Ranch is one of the worst. We're in a golden age of fast food chicken sandwiches, but the classic roast chicken sandwich at Arby's isn't up to snuff. The same dry, chewy chicken that plagues the previously mentioned chicken club wrap also drags this sandwich down. However, Arby's slathers on so much mayo that the dryness of the chicken isn't as noticeable. This sandwich also features multiple slices of tomato and the right amount of lettuce. But there's more bad news. The bun. The texture is too soft, and it's basically flavorless. If you want a classic chicken sandwich from Arby's, the classic crispy chicken sandwich is better. The dry chicken is replaced by a breaded filet that's juicy and flavorful. It's obviously not Chick-fil-A good, but it's definitely better than the roasted version. You have to applaud Arby's for their effort when it comes to the Greek gyro. Gyro? No, gyro? No, the gyro? Mediterranean tacos! Even though they're mysteriously vague when describing the meat as simply gyro meat, this menu item is good enough that you won't feel like you have wasted your money. Along with the gyro meat, Arby's includes red onion, tomato, shredded lettuce, gyro seasoning, and a tasty tzatziki sauce. The flatbread is often chewy, but overall, it's okay. If you can overlook the questionable meat, the Greek gyro is a perfectly average menu item. While not as popular, the roast turkey gyro is actually better, trading the gyro meat for thin slices of tasty roasted turkey. The loaded Italian is Arby's answer to Subway's spicy Italian. And honestly, Arby's does a commendable job of copying what makes the well-known Subway menu item so iconic. The loaded Italian takes most of its flavor from pepperoni and Genoa salami. Arby's bulks up this offering even more with slices of smoked ham. 
The loaded Italian also has banana peppers, tomato, red onion, and shredded lettuce. It's then topped with red wine vinaigrette and garlic aioli for an extra pop of flavor. Where the Arby's loaded Italian falls short of the spicy Italian from Subway is the bread. While Subway has fresh-baked bread that's so good that you wouldn't hesitate to eat it by itself, Arby's uses a toasted sub roll that always tastes like it's a few moments away from being stale. The loaded Italian is good enough to order, but its bread holds it back from climbing higher on this list. It just makes sense that Arby's has a good French dip sandwich, as Arby's is known for their roast beef. The French dip in Swiss lives up to the expectations. While it's not great, it's certainly above average. Along with the roast beef, the French dip in Swiss has Swiss cheese, an Italian sub roll, and French au jus sauce for dipping. Two things hold the French dip in Swiss back a bit. First, the bread underwhelms. Second, there's less roast beef than you'd hope for in this sandwich. The good news is that the latter issue can be solved by upgrading to the half-pound French dip in Swiss. The classic roast beef sandwich is the best-selling item on Arby's menu, and that's not a surprise. Roast beef is Arby's M.O., and getting this sandwich is the most straightforward way to acquire their roast beef. The classic roast beef sandwich comes with roast beef and a sesame seed bun that has been lightly toasted. Yep, that's it. The bare-bones nature of this sandwich is why it's not higher in this ranking. If you eat it as is, it's a bit dry and totally monotonous. Sure, Arby's roast beef is yummy, but your taste buds will yawn from boredom. Thankfully, you can easily jazz this sandwich up by adding Arby sauce or horsey sauce. For those new to the Arby's universe, Arby sauce is somewhere between barbecue sauce, steak sauce, and ketchup with an extra tangy and zingy kick, while horsey sauce tastes like a mix of horseradish and creamy mayonnaise. Arby's roast beef requires no introduction. But chicken at Arby's? That requires some introducing. To keep up with changing tastes, Arby's has improved and expanded their chicken entree options in recent years. Of all the chicken choices, the cream of the crop is their buffalo crispy chicken sandwich. Arby's takes its buttermilk breaded chicken filet and drowns it in a buffalo sauce that has the perfect amount of spice. The filet sits on a bed of shredded lettuce and is topped with a rich ranch sauce. Unlike their ranch dipping sauce, the ranch in this sandwich is actually really good and features peppercorn and parmesan flavors. The bun is far from great, but everything else more than makes up for it. A one-of-a-kind menu item at Arby's is the Smokehouse Brisket. Even if you're a brisket fanatic, this bad boy is probably unlike anything you've ever tried. Arby's brisket is smoked for 13 hours, and the results are tantalizing. Beyond the brisket, this sandwich features smoked Gouda cheese, which is as impressive as the meat. To finish off the smokehouse brisket, Arby's adds crispy onions and a zesty barbecue sauce beneath the top bun and some mayo on the bottom. The only downside here is the mayo, which feels redundant on this ooey-gooey sandwich. There's really no need, so feel free to ask for it to be removed. While Arby's jalapeno bites are a bust, the mozzarella sticks more than hold their own. Even if you think all fried cheese logs taste pretty much the same, you should order these sticks and see that they are indeed some of the best in the fast food world, if not the absolute best. These golden brown flavor bombs have an incredible cheese stretch when you pull them apart. Flavor-wise, the cheesy, oily goodness will captivate. Even if you need to reheat them, the crunch somehow holds up and they'll still be outstanding. What makes the mozzarella sticks even better is the marinara dipping sauce. It's thick, which makes it easy to scoop and extremely flavorful. Arby's has a bigger dessert menu than most of its competition, so it may surprise that the humble vanilla shake is the best of the bunch. This dessert is so good that it's one of the best fast food milkshakes you can find anywhere. The vanilla flavor is so deep that you will thoroughly enjoy each sip. Arby's Vanilla Shake also comes with whipped cream on top that you will quickly inhale with an ear-to-ear -ear grin. The Chocolate Shake, which is also made with genuine Ghirardelli chocolate, is also really good. It's not on the same tier as its vanilla counterpart, but it's a no-brainer if you love chocolate. This shake is also capped with whipped cream, with even more Ghirardelli chocolate drizzled on top. If you need a pick-me-up, the Jamocha Shake is what you need for that job. It's like the chocolate shake, but with coffee added to the mix. Even better, you won't find anything just like it at any other fast food drive through Arby's has the meats, and there's no better way to experience them than to order the Meat Mountain Sandwich. Although this mythical beast of a sandwich isn't on Arby's official menu, it's a secret menu staple pretty much everywhere. This gargantuan sandwich, which came to be thanks to a request from a customer, is truly mountainous. 
Open up the Meat Mountain sandwich and you'll discover Arby's exemplary roast beef, a pair of chicken tenders, multiple slices of pepper bacon, roasted turkey, corned beef, smoked ham, and the same delicious smoked brisket from the Smokehouse Brisket Sandwich. But wait, that's not all. The Meat Mountain sandwich also has slices of Swiss and cheddar cheese. Arby's used to put Angus steak in this sandwich, but no longer does. But even without the steak, this behemoth will fill you up to the brim. You could actually split it in half and have enough for two full meals. We had a picture in the dining room that showcased all the meats and customers kept saying, I would like to order that sandwich. We're like, what? You can make the case that the curly fries from Arby's are the best fast food fries in existence. If you've never tried these fries before, be prepared to be stunned, in the most pleasant way possible, of course. The glory of these fries begins with their shape. After being spiralized from whole potatoes at the factory, next they're blanched, battered, fried, and frozen before being shipped out to Arby's restaurants. When you order them, Arby's finishes cooking their legendary curly fries so that you get them at their very best. Everything about these fries is perfect. They're crispy on the outside and warm and soft on the inside. The coating, which is believed to be a combination of garlic, salt, onion, and various other spices, makes Arby's curly fries so scrumptious that you don't even need to bother with a dipping sauce. No matter what you order, always, always add these fries on the side. While the classic roast beef sandwich might be more popular, Arby's classic beef and cheddar sandwich is absolute perfection. By comparison, the classic roast beef sandwich is a tired, boring, sleepy afterthought. While both sandwiches have roast beef, that's their only commonality. The classic beef and cheddar has an unbelievably tasty onion roll that is far and away the best bread available at Arby's. The dryness of the classic roast beef is solved by adding a cheddar cheese sauce and a red ranch sauce. The result is an enjoyably gooey experience that will leave your taste buds dancing with delight. It's not a terrible idea to add horsey sauce if you want a bit of a kick, but it's difficult to justify messing with perfection. The bottom line is you aren't doing Arby's right unless the classic beef and cheddar sandwich is your go-to menu item. If you're a fan of roast beef, you've probably enjoyed a sandwich or two at Arby's. Well, there are a few surprising facts about the fast food chain you should probably know before biting into your next roast beef sandwich. Arby's roast beef sandwiches have long been associated with one particularly pervasive rumor. As the story goes, the chain's signature sandwich meat starts out as an unappetizing paste, which is later shaped, roasted, and sliced to perfection. So, is there any truth at all to this nasty hearsay? Sorry, conspiracy theorists, this rumor is as false as it is disgusting. As Snopes reports, Jim Lauder of Arby's Quality Assurance has clearly stated, our product does not arrive as a paste, gel, or liquid. Snopes further explained how an outsider might mistake a bag of the packaged roast beef for liquid meat. It's reportedly kept in a goopy solution prior to serving, so the meat probably looks rather slimy at first glance. But Arby's insiders confirm there's indeed a chunk of solid meat swimming in all that goo, and it gets roasted and sliced just like Louder says it does. Okay, so that old liquid meat rumor doesn't hold any water. But what about this particular news nugget? A Michigan teen was finishing his Arby's roast beef sandwich when he bit down on something that seemed rubbery. He spit it out only to discover it was the tip of a finger. Now, Arby's has since apologized, saying it is an isolated and unfortunate incident. The risk of getting an infection from chewing human flesh is low. What can we say other than knowledge is power? Yes, Arby's was founded on the roast beef sandwich, and yes, they took some time to introduce other meats to their menu. But the chain doesn't want to be known as just a roast beef joint anymore, and that explains the focus of their 2018 campaign. Arby's, we have the meats for sandwiches. In an attempt to attract a younger customer base, the company launched a series of theoretically witty commercials highlighting their various other offerings. Why do people still think Arby's is just roast beef when we have 17 other sandwiches? Maybe it was because the last time you went to Arby's, you were with your grandparents who ate exclusively roast beef every meal, somehow. Way to call us out, Arby's. It turns out Arby's has even more meat than you ever thought possible, including deer meat. If you're serious about getting venison, you wake up early. But does the world really need a fast food venison sandwich? Apparently, yes. 
The sandwich proved so popular during its initial test run, Arby's decided to roll it out to mark the start of hunting season in 2017. Arby's is going to start selling venison sandwiches. The fast food chain says the sandwich will include thick cut venison and crispy onions with a berry sauce. A tasty venison sandwich. Arby says it will be 100% deer meat, as if that has to be promised. Meanwhile, members of the Montana Wildlife Federation were reportedly unhappy with the move, with Executive Director Dave Chadwick explaining to KRTV News. You know, they certainly probably had the best of intentions, but it's not the best way to honor our hunting heritage in Montana. Every few years, someone on social media seems to make the realization that the name Arby's could be a play on words. Take, for instance, this Twitter user, whose mind was apparently blown by his own revelation. But Arby's actually doesn't actually stand for roast beef, and squashing the rumor has proven to be quite the uphill battle. In fact, as these claims surface again and again on social media, Arby's does its best to set the record straight. Uh, we came up with the name Arby's from the initials of our restaurant equipment company, which was Raffle Brothers. That became R period, B period, Arby's. So there you have it. Of course, a lot of the confusion probably stems from their 80s slogan, which was an acronym for Arby's. You and I love America's roast beef, yes sir. You brought this upon yourself, Arby's. Throughout his long tenure on The Daily Show, Jon Stewart delighted in ripping into Arby's. Arby's! <laughs> Isn't there anywhere else we can eat? Arby's, you think pain and grief are hard to digest? Arby's! <laughs> Technically, it's food. As it turns out, Arby's was a really good sport about the running joke. According to Grub Street, whenever Stewart took a jab at Arby's on The Daily Show, the fast food chain would send along a free lunch the very next day. Chief Marketing Officer Rob Lynch explained to Fortune Live, But if you try to stifle it, it, it comes off as very inauthentic. It comes off as big corporate America. And talk about good sports. When Stewart left The Daily Show in 2015, Arby's even made a commercial to fondly bid him farewell. Way to turn the other cheek, Arby's. Arby's. No gimmicks. Just diarrhea. You know who loves you, baby. Sometimes you want something a little more original than a burger and fries. That's where Arby's comes in. Arby's has been known for its roast beef sandwiches for over 40 years. From the roasting process to the sauces, this is what makes Arby's roast beef so tasty. Fast food meat doesn't always get the best rap, and sometimes that's for good reason. From McDonald's to Wendy's to Taco Bell, no one is immune from scrutiny, and that includes Arby's. But despite the rumors that have swirled around, Arby's roast beef is made with 100% real beef, which is the primary reason it's so good. No filler, no fake protein, and certainly no liquid meat. Because Arby's roast beef is more of a meal. Snopes laid out documented research to bust that myth. Speaking with the representative from Arby's, along with a number of workers, everyone confirmed that Arby's roast beef consists entirely of beef. The report suggested that the way the beef is packaged when it arrives at restaurants may have led to some confusion. Other sources online have also come to Arby's defense, assuring fans that the roast beef they know and love is in fact roast beef. Real meat is a great place to start, but that alone does not make for great beef. That's why Arby's prepares the roast beef in the restaurant every day, making sure it's always fresh and done right. In the words of one franchise owner in New York, Arby's is serving up slow-roasted, lean roast beef that we cook in-house all day long. Every time that someone comes in to get a roast beef sandwich, they are getting a quality fresh product. Snopes, in an effort to debunk the liquid meat myth, also confirmed that Arby's kitchen workers have the routine job of placing all the beef sent to the restaurant each day onto cooking sheets to roast for about three hours. The beef has to cool for a bit afterward, and then it's ready to slice and serve. Let's revisit the Arby's liquid meat myth one last time. A big reason for the confusion is actually tied to Arby's method for ensuring your roast beef sandwich is nice and juicy. All Arby's beef roasts, which are eventually sliced up and piled between two buns, are delivered to Arby's restaurants in sealed plastic bags before they are cooked. An Arby's rep told Snopes that those bags, which have been rumored to contain nothing more than a gelatinous blob, are actually full of a self-basting solution, which contains just enough water to keep the product juicy throughout our restaurant's three-hour roasting process and during slicing. A peek inside an Arby's kitchen confirms that all the beef is roasted within the bags. This process allows the roast to cook through faster and more evenly, marinating in beefy juices the whole time.
It would certainly ruin a perfectly juicy, marinated, and slow-roasted beef sandwich if all that meat was sliced up too soon and left out to dry. As such, a key to its legendary roast beef sandwiches is freshly slicing its meat in-store daily, which it's been doing since it opened its doors in 1964. The company has said, and employees confirm, that all of Arby's roast beef is weighed and sliced to order. It may mean a little extra work to craft each sandwich, but it makes a big difference in quality. At least one former employee boasted about just how much this set Arby's apart, writing on Reddit that, all of the roast beef is cooked daily and sliced to order just moments before it gets on the sandwich and into your hands. I know this sounds like Arby's propaganda, but it's the absolute truth and one of the reasons why I was proud to work there compared to other fast food. A roast beef sandwich from Arby's has a distinct flavor you can't get anywhere else, and it's not just because of the onion roll or the added cheese sauce. Arby's uses its own blend of seasonings to give its roast beef a unique taste that goes right down to the slice. And you can bet the chain that stakes its whole reputation on having, quote, the meats, knows exactly how to season it the right way. According to Arby's, its beef is coated with pepper, garlic, onion powder, and other spices, although seasonings work their way deep into the tissue of the meat, infusing flavor through the hours-long roasting process. It's nothing fancy or complicated, but for some reason, it just works. Sometimes it's the simplest ingredients that make the tastiest things, especially when those ingredients are pepper, onion, and garlic. Arby's has made it clear that it is committed to supporting and providing sustainable beef, and it hopes you can taste the difference. The company is a member of the U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Beef, which puts forward initiatives to improve beef sustainability across the board. That means everything from water resources, land resources, animal health and well-being, employee safety and well-being, efficiency and yields and air and greenhouse gas emissions. Sustainable beef is produced from cows that are ethically and humanely farmed, usually organically fed and pasture-raised. And there's scientific data to suggest that sustainably farmed cows, which tend to live happier, healthier lives than industrial-raised cattle, produce better-tasting, higher-quality meat. If there's one thing better than an Arby's roast beef sandwich, it's an Arby's classic beef and cheddar sandwich. As described by the chain, we took our famous roast beef, topped it with cheddar cheese sauce and zesty red ranch, and served it on a toasted onion roll. The sauce is rich, creamy, and slightly tangy, a perfect complement to the hearty, umami flavor of the roast beef. Made with tomato, paprika, and tons of vinegar, just add Arby's red ranch and you've got the perfect combination. It cuts through all that cheese and meat, balancing every bite. It's everything you want in a flavorful, fast food meal. Arby's makes several sauces designed to take your roast beef sandwich over the edge. You can't go wrong with Arby's sauce, the chain's original signature dressing. It's zesty, tangy, and a little sweet. Made with tomato, garlic, spices, and vinegar, there's definitely a barbecue vibe to it, but it's still unique in its own right. And when you're having a sandwich stuffed full of salty roast beef, the mild sugar and acidic notes make it the ultimate flavor pairing. If you like things a little bolder, Arby's has its own take on the classic roast beef and horseradish pairing. Arby's horsey sauce is creamy and tangy with a kick made with eggs, mustard, spices, and horseradish. Of course, you could always throw all caution to the wind and jazz up your roast beef sandwich with both sauces. There's some serious science behind why our fast food favorites are so crave-inducing, and Arby's is no exception. Fat, sugar, and salt are all problematic in high amounts, yet they make food so delicious. Salt enhances the natural flavors in food and keeps meat juicy. Data shows that sugar plays a big role in balancing all the different tastes found in a dish. And fat, well, it just makes things better all around. So it's worth noting that the ingredients list confirms that Arby's roast beef is made with added sugar and salt. And a quick peek at the nutritional makeup of the signature meat product provides some major insight into why it's so delicious. A single small roast beef sandwich contains 360 calories, 14 grams of fat, 5 grams of saturated fat, 970 milligrams of sodium, and 5 grams of sugar. Upgrade your sandwich to a beef and cheddar, and you're looking at 450 calories, 20 grams of fat, 1280 milligrams of sodium, and 9 grams of sugar. If you're in the mood for a roast beef sandwich, chances are you're pretty hungry. And when your appetite gears up for something that hearty, the last thing you want is a skimpy sandwich. A few measly slices of thin meat just isn't going to cut it. And Arby's knows that. As Arby's chief marketing officer told Drovers, in the end, what built the Arby's brand were big, meaty sandwiches. In that regard, he says the company has always been focused on the quality of the food, the abundance of meat in the sandwich. That's why each and every Arby's roast beef sandwich is measured as the beef is sliced, ensuring you're getting maximum meat in every bite. And Arby's also knows that some people need more meat than others to fill them up. So they offer both their classic roast beef sandwich and their beef and cheddar sandwich in a regular size, a larger size that's got twice the meat of the regular, as well as a mega sandwich with a whopping half pound of roast beef on it. Above all else, Arby's roast beef is so delicious because that's what the company cares about. Arby's sought to achieve what others weren't from the very beginning, and has built a legacy out of doing things its own way that goes right back to the founders. A big roast beef platter with potatoes and coleslaw. Arby's is a big change of taste. Since it first opened, Arby's has cemented its place in the crowded fast food market as a destination for meat lovers, and it is committed to leaning into that distinction, even as the winds of change blow. 
Arby's president Rob Lynch told USA Today, Our brand has always been about big meat, high-protein sandwiches. Some of our competitors have struggled the last few years. They're trying to be everything to everyone. We are sticking with our strategy. To that end, Arby's is one of the only chains out there that has definitively stepped away from the growing trend of plant-based meat alternatives. In fact, when addressing a rumor that Arby's was in talks with Impossible Foods back in 2019, the company boldly stated that, "...the chances we will bring plant-based menu items to our restaurants, now or in the future, are absolutely impossible. Instead, Arby's will stay focused on the meats, specifically the beef." According to Arby's CMO, "...the American consumer's appetite for beef has never been bigger. We will continue to push the envelope on ways America can enjoy beef." When you go to Arby's, you know one thing. They have the meats. And a bunch of other stuff. So much stuff, in fact, it can be hard to decide which stuff to eat. Well, we're here to help, with a look at some things you should absolutely never order from Arby's. Sandwiches are prisons for food. The whole point is to trap the good stuff inside a cage of bread. If things are falling out of your sandwich or dripping, or turning the bread itself into mush, that's the sign of an unsuccessful sandwich. Like Arby's Reuben. Their rye is the main culprit as it's just not sturdy enough to stand up to the Thousand Island dressing and sauerkraut. And while there seems to be enough meat, it's unevenly distributed, leading to pockets of boring bread. Our suggestion? Just get something else instead. I'm not eating that shit. I want a Big Montana. A what? A Big Montana from Arby's with curly fries. Hey guys, remember the 90s? Jurassic Park, the Spice Girls, and Seinfeld? So where do you want to eat? Feels like an Arby's night. Well, Arby's apparently remembers the 90s because they still feature a bunch of wraps on their menu. And wraps haven't been in style since Bill Clinton was in office. In truth, wraps were never even that great in the first place. They were notoriously dry and totally unimaginative. And these are no exception. They're also not as good for you as you think. The roast turkey ranch and bacon wrap, for example, is a whopping 620 calories, half of which come from fat. So skip the wrap and order something from this century instead. According to their website, nothing says I'm an adventurous eater and interesting person like eating a gyro at Arby's. This is only a slight exaggeration because you do indeed have to be adventurous to try something that so little resembles an actual gyro. Gyros are usually made with sizzling hot lamb shavings from a vertical rotisserie. Arby's, however, makes theirs with slices of roast beef or turkey, meats that aren't even close to lamb in taste, texture, or substance in general. As one writer for Spoon University put it, it would appear Arby's has given up trying to create a reasonable facsimile of the real thing. Arby's jalapeno bites are freakishly hot, and by hot, we're not talking about spicy. We actually mean scorching. Arby's website describes them as, "...spicy jalapeno halves with melted cream cheese, battered and fried for a fiery treat." But what they fail to mention is the part where they burst open in your mouth and burn the enamel right off your teeth. It's a surprise every time, and not a good one. Eating Arby's, eating Arby's, eating, eating Arby's, Arby's, eating Arby's, Arby's. 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 <laughs> Cheese seems pretty simple. You start with milk and go from there, right? Well, not at Arby's. The first ingredient in Arby's cheddar cheese sauce is water, actually. Followed by canola oil, modified cornstarch, and then, finally, cheddar cheese. And then a bunch of weird-sounding additives that are probably fine but aren't cheese. Suffice it to say, this is not the most natural food in the world, or the most appetizing. As one former Arby's employee wrote on Reddit, "...cleaning out the cheese goop pump when closing was enough to prepare me for working with human stool." sputum, and blood lab specimens without blinking years later. Yikes. Arby's, the meal that's a dare for your colon. <laughs> we get it. Arby's wants to be known for more than just the fast food restaurant that only serves meat. But there's a reason their giant cowboy hat sign says Arby's roast beef sandwich is delicious, instead of Arby's salad is delicious. Despite being on the menu since 1991, Arby's salads are sorely lacking. The chopped side salad comprised of a handful of lettuce, diced tomato, and a sad sprinkle of cheese is equally as dismal as the crispy chicken farmhouse salad. If you want salad, there are great places that make salad. At Arby's, well, listen to the giant hat and just eat the meat. The flight meat's back on the menu, boys! The French dip sandwich is a fan favorite. It's so tasty, it's enough to make anyone want to head to Arby's. Do you think you're at an Arby's right now? You know what? I wish I was at an Arby's. Because there's better food and cooler people there. Just one problem. There's way, way too much salt in these things. How much? Well, the American Heart Association recommends taking in 2,300 milligrams of sodium over the course of an entire day. The half-pound French dip? It's got 3,400 just by itself. Sure, nobody heads to Arby's expecting a super healthy meal, but you have to draw the line somewhere. And the half-pound French dip is it. Super low pay. 
frozen beef loaded with antibiotics, and questionable menu items like deer burgers. Arby's has the meats, but they also have plenty of reasons why their food is so inexpensive. Let's be honest here. How many drive through chains have ever touted fresh, handcrafted food prepared on site? in and out being the exception. The answer is not a lot. Arby's, which is first and foremost a fast food enterprise, is certainly no exception. Arby's promises cheap, convenient eats on the fly. And it's a given that the majority of its lineup has been frozen and thawed out before ever hitting the fryer. You said you were going to come here and I should leave you some delicious Arby's on the table because uh, you want some Arby's too? It's cold, though. In the case of the chain's signature curly fries, one individual who used to work at Arby's recounted their experience touring the restaurant and seeing the spuds stashed away in a massive walk-in freezer. As the Cora Post recalled, there are bags and bags of curly fries, already curled and ready for the deep fryer. Although a former manager did confirm that Arby's acquires its meats from farms, an employee on Reddit revealed that the slabs of beef are sealed in plastic bags before being thawed, a process that can take multiple days before the flank sizzles away in the oven. Frozen goods definitely explain Arby's lower price point. Acquiring the ingredients, not to mention the labor, of preparing mozzarella sticks from scratch would be much more costly than stashing them away in the freezer. And it stands to reason that Arby's probably has a supplier who offers a decent deal on buying items in bulk. Compared to the thinly sliced cutlets from your neighborhood sandwich shop, spending under $4 for a classic roast beef sandwich is a hard bargain to beat. The trade-off? You're not exactly paying for quality. Arby's takes shortcuts by using meats pumped full of antibiotics, a practice that maintains the profit-driven nature of factory farming and doesn't necessarily lead to the freshest grub around. While the U.S. Food and Drug Administration ensures antibiotics remain at safe levels for human consumption, Healthline explains farms that have medicated livestock have created bacteria immune to the treatment, rendering many standard medications ineffective in combating infections. Experts have warned of the terrifying possibilities resulting from the excessive pattern established by farms, and solutions have included demanding restaurants to shift their practices. Arby's, unfortunately, is no role model here. A massive study in 2021, conducted by several major nonprofits, gave the chain's meat a failing grade on this front, joining Jack in the Box, Sonic, Burger King, and others in missing the mark, according to the National Resources Defense Council. Arby's might claim to have the meats, but those meats are going to be cheap. To pile on fistfuls of beef onto bread for millions of hungry customers, it's inevitable that the quality won't be anything to rave about. With these expectations in mind, enjoying a quick bite on a budget is what Arby's is built for. There are so many flavorful condiments to smother your fries or favorite Arby sandwich in. Employees will even toss in an extra couple packets, just to make sure there's ample sauce for coating each and every meat-filled bite. And it's no trouble. Arby's can afford it because the condiments on their own are quite inexpensive, thanks to the cheap ingredients. As confirmed by Arby's handy ingredient guide, many of the components that make up the chain sauces are quite basic on the surface. Arby sauce, the in-house equivalent to ketchup, contains water, corn syrup, tomato paste, and distilled vinegar. Smoky Q sauce, the smoked brisket sandwich's exclusive topper, consists of the above mix-ins, in addition to molasses and garlic powder. Nothing fancy. Frankly, no one has to venture far to find any of these products. Assuming you're swinging by the supermarket for groceries, finding mayonnaise and horseradish is more than guaranteed, even if you're not planning to whip up homemade horsey sauce. Though when it's this easy to make, why not give it a go? I got people to answer to just like you do. I'm gonna charge them. What, possession of a condiment? The ultimate profit killer for a fast food chain is unpopular menu items. Arby's made the call to streamline their offerings in 2021 when it officially removed pizza sliders and potato cakes from the menu. People weren't buying them at the rate of the other, more popular snacks, and that forced the franchise to slim down on the selection. When it comes to curating a financially successful menu, Arby's clearly enjoys variety. Just look at the array of meats, cheeses, and starch-centric finger foods that are plastered all over the drive through However, if specific items aren't selling well or at a pace that satisfies corporate's expectations, then customers can expect to find cuts on occasion. Hey, what's going on in that room? It's a focus group of Arby's executives watching us eat. Oh, no way! He ate People it! People will eat anything! Plenty of fans were gutted by Arby's decision to discontinue the potato cakes and went to great lengths in expressing their frustration. One Reddit commenter wrote, Guess I'm never eating at Arby's again. Another vowed, If they don't return, my days as a customer are truly numbered. Even if Arby's food is cheap, the expenses that come with running a restaurant are not. 
paying rent, heating and cooling the building, and using energy across a multitude of kitchen appliances is bound to gobble up a pretty penny. In order to keep costs down, Arby's goes the rational route by simply using less energy in its stores. And this has produced big dividends for the company, according to QSR magazine. A 2015 press statement by the Environmental Protection Agency program Energy Star gave a shout-out to the chain's sustainability efforts, which resulted in a 15% drop in energy that same year. How did Arby's do it? By simply tweaking existing protocol, combined with some much-needed industrial upgrades. The chain switched over to energy-efficient appliances, as well as effective heating, air conditioning, and a water-saving irrigation system. Arby's Senior Director of Engineering provided QSR Magazine with a few examples of how quick fixes, often at a store level, could cut unnecessary spending. Arby's relies on utilities to function, but it's irresponsible to burn through energy willy-nilly, no matter how high you stack that sandwich. And when you have over 3,000 locations operating simultaneously, any solution to save a few bucks is money in the bank. Arby's food is served in clean, well-lit quarters across thousands of locations, and that's by design. Over time, the chain has happily renovated its stores to reflect a modern dining experience, whose success Carl Reddit, manager of business intelligence and analytics, credits to something simple, cold, hard statistics. Speaking on the company's use of the logistics platform Tableau, Reddit says, The data showed that we need to spend more money remodeling our restaurants, freshening up the look, that it really has helped the business. Whether it's replacing furniture, updating point-of-sale software, or spiffing up the menu board, improving a chain's look carries plenty of advantages. Getting people through the doors is how a fast food chain makes money. By utilizing this business strategy, Arby's proves that revamping physical locations is not counterintuitive to saving money. If anything, it's an investment on future returns for Arby's, and by extension, the unbelievable value found on its menu. At Arby's, it's about inspiring smiles through delicious experiences. And that's what we want when anybody walks into the restaurant. While there's plenty of perks to having a cashier take your order, fast food giants are opting for savvier methods to conduct business. Things have gone digital at Arby's, and that's due to mobile ordering. Using either the chain's website or mobile app, customers can, with the click of a button, select their favorite sandwiches, sides, and drinks for pickup or through their takeout app of choice. Investing in new technology can sometimes be a costly undertaking. However, providing multiple ordering platforms is a safe bet to encourage more customers to visit Arby's. And as Inspire Brands CFO David Pipes explained in 2018, the company's gone through the calculations to ensure that the move is still profitable. Pipes told Forbes, When guests are paying by means other than handing their cash or card to the frontline team member, such as via a website or a mobile device, we ensure that all costs are considered and determine what we need for these transactions to be successful. Because the only requirement for mobile ordering is a cell phone and Wi-Fi connection, there's less need for service workers. After all, the customer can do it on the spot, anytime, anywhere. This allows for flexibility on the consumer side, all while handing Arby's a financial advantage by cutting out the middleman and effectively outsourcing the labor onto the customer. Arby's is part of a $30 billion empire under Inspire Brands. But while Arby's is cashing in with mind-blowing profits as of late, the employees responsible for this wealth have largely scraped by on the minimum wage. A team member can expect to make $12.40 per hour, while positions with more seniority, like shift leaders, only pull in a little extra at $14.65 an hour. With those numbers, it's no coincidence that only 35% of employees reporting on Indeed felt that Arby's compensation was reasonable. Even under circumstances where Arby's workers were financially stable, issues surrounding work-life balance prevented most employees from feeling content about their jobs. According to a shift manager who wrote on Indeed, the chain barely provided any benefits to the senior hires, who were expected to, quote, dedicate their entire lives to the franchise. Another individual on Simply Hired noted Arby's was prone to limiting hours in a way that made the, quote, decent wages irrelevant in the face of less work, and therefore meant less money they could earn as a whole. At the end of the day, Arby's is a corporation, and corporations run on the premise that there's money to be made. The ends justify the means, as the saying goes. The cost of your roast beef slider can only stay cheap because the chain is maintaining a low-paid workforce to churn them out in record numbers. Otherwise, prices will look noticeably different. <laughs> now hiring anybody. <laughs> wow. Wow. Anybody. <laughs> Roast beef sandwiches, the prime driver of business going back to the Raffel brothers, are far from Arby's only specialty. 
chicken salad, hamburgers, smoked ribs, even breaded fish sticks have also appeared on the menu. The trick to keeping these items around? Let's just say they graduate and fly the coop, so to speak. Often, the chain releases products for a limited time so that fun, out-of-the-box bites can flourish without breaking the bank. Probably the finest example of the scarcity approach was the venison sandwich, which was initially sold in five states back in 2016 before launching nationwide the following year. In each rollout, the product flew out of drive through windows almost immediately and set off polarizing feedback from the public at large, according to NPR. Per Forbes, it did exactly as the company intended – generate a lot of buzz. There's no doubt the cost of ingredients and supplies skyrockets when a chain attempts to play all the hit records at once. Or in this case, offer every single dish under the sun. On the flip side, releasing a temporary one-off can mix up the current offerings, all while keeping Arby's budget under control. Cheese stick Jenga aside, there's no denying that Arby's knows who it is and what it does best. Big piles of beef between bread. It's nothing flashy or adventurous, but that isn't the point. Arby's brand identity has always been strong, and this clear-eyed perception of its image has, without a doubt, helped the company flourish. Consider, for example, when Arby's hopped aboard the hamburger bandwagon with the limited-run Wagyu Steakhouse Burger in May 2022. Arby's could have rolled out dozens of different hamburgers should its debut launch have been a hit, as is the pattern most fast food chains follow. But surprisingly, that isn't what happened. Rather than oversaturate the menu, the restaurant decided in favor of offering a single, albeit better-tasting product. Patrick Swing, chief of marketing officer, told CNN, "...instead of focusing on making billions of mediocre burgers, we're taking a stance on high-quality meat that deserves to be cooked properly." Besides its soft spot for beef, Arby's menu skews to the lavish side of the drive through because of its premium fare, including lofty condiments and smoked brisket. A high-end burger, by that token, is completely within the bounds of what the brand has specialized in for decades, all the while remaining enough of a curiosity to draw in new converts under the franchise's wide, welcoming brim, and help Arby's in the long run pile on the money like they pile on the meat. A venison sandwich on a fast food chain menu? Yep, you heard that right. Though it may not be that surprising to find it at Arby's, a fast food restaurant known for its meat-heavy menu. It features a thick-cut venison steak, crispy onions, and a berry sauce. The roast beef options may be what Arby's is known for, but you can find plenty of other meat possibilities, too. If you're in the mood for burgers topped with brisket, chicken, ham, or roast beef, Arby's has you covered. Arby's, like other restaurant chains, is always looking to expand their offerings and attract new customers to their menu. In 2018, they put duck on the menu for a limited time. Also, in recent years, in an effort to always add different types of meat to their menu, Arby's released a limited-time option that didn't go over so well — a venison sandwich. For those of you who don't already know, venison is deer meat. Venison isn't easy to source in the United States because it's not commercialized. So when you do find deer meat on the menu, it's usually at upscale restaurants. Dave Chadwick, executive director of the Montana Wildlife Federation, told NPR regarding Arby's decision to include a venison sandwich on their menu, "...we really shouldn't be selling game animals for food." Although his organization is made up of hunters and conservationists, Chadwick explained that the United States had a major problem with overhunting bison, elk, deer, and other antlered animals in the 19th century. He said, "...one of the real drivers of America's wildlife crisis in the 19th century was unregulated market hunting and the idea that big game animals were being shot and sold for food." It makes sense that conservationist groups would be concerned, especially when a type of meat that isn't typically available to the masses is all of a sudden offered cheaply in a fast food joint. But Arby's doesn't have it that easy when it comes to sourcing the meat. Arby's purchased venison all the way from New Zealand because it's not feasible or attainable to buy in the States, according to NPR, which is good news for those who are worried that people may have a new favorite type of meat. The company is also testing an elk sandwich at a few locations. Serving up venison sandwiches wasn't the only situation to stir up controversy at Arby's. The chain was sued in 2012 for allegedly stealing a slogan for their limited-time bourbon bacon sandwiches. It only took three words to get in trouble — eat your bourbon. Bourbon Barrel Foods, a gourmet specialty food shop based out of Louisville, Kentucky, trademarked this phrase as a slogan for their bourbon-based sauce business, which specializes in various condiments such as Worcestershire sauce, barbecue sauce, and bourbon smoked sea salt. The owner, Matt Jamie, wasn't happy that a huge fast food chain had borrowed his phrasing, but dropped the lawsuit when Arby's agreed that a slogan wasn't worth fighting for and opted for another catchphrase. The slogan initially was highlighted on Arby's website and in an email newsletter to customers. Though their substitute slogan for those bourbon-focused sandwiches, we paired 
bourbon with meats and buns wasn't quite as catchy, it wasn't going to cause headaches and legal drama. If you're not a fan of meat or stick to a vegetarian or vegan diet, Arby's isn't going to be a preferred choice when it comes to fast food options. Their menu is very limited when it comes to non-meat items, with mostly fried and potato options, such as curly fries, crinkle fries, mozzarella sticks, jalapeno bites, and salads. And if you're hoping for a sandwich, you can skip the line because they don't serve up a single vegetarian option. And that's on purpose. In fact, when the chain debuted brown sugar bacon in 2015, it created an open letter from Arby's to vegetarians across America, mocking vegetarians by saying they would have a hard time resisting their meat sandwiches. They joked that even non-meat eaters would be tempted to give in to their carnivore desires and could call an invented vegetarian support hotline. Their message said, when your nose betrays you and alerts the rest of your senses to find and devour this sweet meat, please call 1-855-MEAT-HELP. As if that wasn't enough, the message continued, you will receive the support you need to resist this gateway meat and get tips on how to avoid temptation. Delicious, sizzling temptation. Needless to say, this rubbed many vegetarians the wrong way. Did you know that the roast turkey ranch and bacon sandwich from Arby's contains a whopping 810 calories? Want to know why this popular sandwich is not as healthy as you may have thought? Keep watching! Arby's is best known for its massive roast beef sandwiches. The restaurant chain got its start in 1964 when brothers Leroy and Forrest Raffle opened up their first shop in Ohio. According to Funding Universe, the two brothers, who already worked in the food business, realized that the fast food industry was rapidly growing, and they wanted to get in on the ground level. Don't worry, Mom. I'm eating right. Don't worry, Mom. They're eating at Arby's. While many other fast food joints were serving burgers, Leroy and Forrest differed from the rest by serving roast beef sandwiches. It got them noticed by consumers quickly. And since that first shop opened, Arby's has expanded to include plenty of options in over 3,000 locations. Now, the Arby's menu offers a wide array of choices like chicken, sliders, wraps, and gyros. Arby's might have set itself apart with its initial food offering, but when it comes to nutrition, it has a similar reputation to other fast food restaurants. Because of this, those looking to order the roast turkey ranch and bacon sandwich might want to think twice. This sandwich might appear to be a healthier choice when compared to classic Arby's roast beef. It's made with roast turkey, bacon, and ranch, of course, but it's served with add-ons that would seemingly make it healthy, such as red onion and lettuce. Plus, the sandwich comes on honey wheat bread, so it must be good for you, right? Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. While the veggies on the sandwich do provide some nutrition as a whole, it's loaded with calories and sodium. According to the posted nutrition facts on the restaurant's website, one roast turkey ranch and bacon sandwich contains 810 calories. It provides a staggering 35 grams of fat and 79 grams of carbohydrates. You might also want to consider the amount of sodium in the sandwich. With 2,420 milligrams, it packs more than an entire day's worth of salt into one fast food menu item. Those looking for some healthier Arby's menu options might want to check out their crispy chicken salad or roast turkey and Swiss wrap. Though Arby's roast turkey ranch and bacon sandwich is not the healthiest menu item, it's not the worst. There are some items you'll want to avoid if you find yourself pulling up to the drive through window, especially the options that contain roast beef. Arby's half-pound beef and cheddar sandwich is not a healthy menu choice. The sandwich clocks in at 39 grams of fat and 2,530 milligrams of sodium, per the Arby's website, which is more than the recommended daily amount, according to the American Heart Association. Steer clear of the classic and double beef options of this cheddar sandwich as well, since both have similar nutrition facts. For those watching their salt intake, don't order the French dip sandwich. It contains 2,550 milligrams of sodium, even higher in salt content than any of the previously mentioned sandwiches. Finally, the Smokehouse Brisket Sandwich, which comes in at less sodium than the others, but contains 33 grams of fat and 600 calories. Thankfully, those looking for something a bit healthier do have at least one solid option. Plus, another honorable mention. Arby's! It's good mood food! You don't have to lose all hope of finding something healthy on the Arby's menu, as long as you're in the mood for a salad. The Arby's Roast Chicken Salad is its healthiest choice, and today deems it one of the better fast food salads out there. It comes in at only 250 calories and 14 grams of fat, both of which are much lower than any of the sandwich options. Plus, with 690 milligrams of sodium, it contains substantially less salt than some of Arby's sandwiches. As an added bonus, consumers will also get 25 grams of protein. Coming in second place of the healthiest Arby's option is the Roast Turkey Euro. Its calorie count is low, at just 470, but it still contains 20 grams of fat and 1,530 milligrams of sodium, both of which aren't low enough to be considered super healthy. This gyro makes it clear that a salad is ultimately the best choice, but for those looking for something handheld, the gyro provides a good balance of vegetables and protein.
Arby's is one of America's favorite fast food sandwich chains. They have the meats, according to award-winning actor Ving Rhames' voice in the brand's iconic commercials. Arby's has been known for its roast beef sandwiches since Leroy and Forrest Raffle opened the first Arby's in 1964. They wanted to stand out in a sea of burger joints by offering something different — roast beef. They later added cheddar cheese sauce, red onion, and a toasted onion roll to the sandwich in 1978. Flash forward, and Arby's has started selling its famous meats by the pound. The fast food chain also adds limited time options to attract a variety of customers, such as an upgraded prime rib sandwich and chicken cheddar ranch sandwich. Today, Arby's clearly wants to be seen as more than the place with the roast beef. In fact, a campaign was launched called Head of Sandwiches, the main purpose of which was to promote the other sandwich options available at Arby's. The campaign has been successful in attracting a younger consumer into the restaurant, according to Forbes. Arby's is currently owned by one of the largest restaurant companies in the U.S., Inspire Brands. In addition to Arby's, Inspire Brands also owns Sonic, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Jimmy John's. All combined, there are more than 11,000 restaurants, 1,400 franchisees, and $14.6 billion in system sales within the group, according to the company. Inspire Brands has recently filed trademarks for names of possible ghost kitchens, which would offer delivery and takeout only, a move that could put them ahead of several quick service chains. If all this sounds enticing, here's what you'll need. The Arby's team expects all franchise candidates to have extensive multi-unit restaurant operator experience, as well as a desire to open multiple Arby's locations. You'll also need a minimum of $500,000 in liquid capital and a net worth of at least $1 million. Breaking it down further, according to FranchiseGator, Arby's initial license fee is $37,500 for the first restaurant unit and $25,000 for each additional store. Royalty fees are an additional 4% of gross sales. National and local advertising are additional fees, 1.2 and 3% of gross sales, respectively. Still on board? Let's keep going. Arby's president Jim Taylor recently addressed 700 Arby's franchisees, telling them, Arby's was born to be different. We're different because of the food we serve, the service experience we offer, and our bold, confident voice that breaks through with culture in a way that others in QSR don't. How is Arby's innovating? Remember the pork belly sandwich or the marrot, Arby's meat carrot? Arby's was also one of the first fast food chains to say it would never serve plant-based meat, according to Food & Wine. Still on the fence? Let's look at a few more details about Arby's. As a franchisee of any corporation, what other franchisees do can trickle down to your stores. While you may own your own restaurants, you are still part of a big family. For example, one Minnesota franchisee made news recently when they posted a sign stating, "...only well-behaved children who can keep their food on their trays and their bottoms on their seats are welcome. If you can't do this, you will be asked to leave." Arby's ordered the franchisee to remove the sign and publicly issued an apology. But perhaps the PR damage was done. Which brings us to our next point to consider. Could it be better to open your own independent restaurant in lieu of a franchise? There are pros and cons to both scenarios. As a franchisee, you benefit from branding, training, marketing, and ingredient sourcing, but also pay fees and royalties, lose some control as an owner, and are subject to scrutiny by the franchise. As an independent owner, you can control your own brand, marketing, menu, and hours, but you also start with no brand recognition, resources, training, or access to suppliers. So what did you decide? If you're interested in peddling those famous Arby's meats alongside the popular, perfectly seasoned curly fries, submit a franchise application online at Arby's.